Ayurveda can kill you. Research is an indispensable component of science. It is at the end of these tedious research processes that the findings and evidence are published in various scientific journals. Such breakthrough scientific information and findings that happens in a corner of this world is left to be utilized world over. In this way, every year in the field of science, thousands of scientific papers are published on diverse subjects in hundreds of scientific journals. Currently, I am working in one such research organization which focuses on liver diseases. And we have a bunch of research papers already published in the past few years. One such disease case report was published recently in Oxford Medical Case Reports. The study was headed by Dr. Suryak Abbey Phillips, a hepatologist popularly known as the liver doc. Since such publications are highly technical, mostly in a boring language and accessible only to the specialists, the general public is always ignorant about all these. Instead, what they are exposed to is the news articles and press conferences which are often far from the reality. The public is in fact deceived to believe that testimonies and anecdotes are the real evidence than the researched, peer-reviewed and published scientific data. That's why it's a big news and why people believe a doctor claiming in the news that a nasal glucose spray can stop the COVID-19 or why the people believe homeopathy as a treatment choice for infertility or why the people believe Ayurveda can cure jaundice which is just a symptom of an underlying liver disease. Here we are trying to bring a change to this grave scenario. Along with the researches we conduct and the papers that we publish for the scientific world to garner its utility, we are also trying to explain it in simple terms to the general public so that they get a glimpse of the reality which stands above the testimonies and anecdotes they come across in their daily life. Now, let's get into the details of our study. A study which saw a girl is almost killed by Ayurveda. Alcoholic liver disease is an infamously known disease condition both to the doctors and the public alike. It requires no particular elaboration at this point of time. At the same time, treating such disease conditions has improved dramatically by the advent of modern medical science. Liver transplantations are now saving patients affected with such conditions on a daily basis. Just then, a 14-year-old girl presented to the OPD with liver disease. A very young liver patient with persistent jaundice and fluid collection in the abdomen or ascites, despite multiple treatments. Her father stood beside silently with a telling face with the agony of his daughter losing her precious childhood. A 14-year-old young girl with a liver disease. What exactly is the reason to her plight? We started the investigations one after the other. We were determined to leave no stone unturned. At the end of the day, when her first liver biopsy report arrived, that was really worrying to us. The histopathological images in the report was so similar to that of a fulminant alcoholic liver disease along with features of non-serotic portal hypertension. We started investigating the possibilities that caused such an imagery. The first thing that we checked was if there are any other medications the child might be taking. We didn't go wrong there. As she had been suffering from seizural disorders for several years, it was revealed that she was taking medications for it. Modern medications were the first to be used until when she had relapse of seizures even after the medications. So as usual, her relatives suggested alternative therapies and finally she was led to CNS Ayurveda clinic in Palakkad, Kerala. We were informed that the child was on Ayurvedic medicines for several years and was still on them. It was also noticed that 
the seizures were less relapsing after its usage. We asked them to produce those medicines, which was eventually sent for a chemical analysis in a certified laboratory. We waited impatiently for the chemical analysis reports. As we saw the reports, the gravity of the problem escalated. It was found that Ayurvedic medicines on which the child was on for so long contained ethyl alcohol, several plant chemicals, organic and inorganic toxic substances, poisons like arsenic, and what is more, the presence of clonazepam, a drug that is given in modern medical science for seizures. It was not just the cocktail of toxic substances that was revealed in the analysis but also shed light on why the child had a remission of seizures while taking the Ayurvedic medicine, the presence of clonazepam. Here it is understood how Ayush treatments like Ayurveda takes advantage of people's faith and their vulnerability. The child was asked to stop those Ayurvedic medicines immediately and instead modern medicines with precise dosage for seizures and other medicines for liver disease was prescribed. Six months later, to our relief, a second liver biopsy showed the disappearance of alcohol-related liver disease. But what was left was the signs of non-serotic portal hypertension, which is a classical manifestation of arsenic poisoning. It is also worth noticing here that clonazepam is not hepatotoxic, which is an established scientific fact. In order to confirm that this resultant liver disease was due to chronic arsenic exposure, the fingernails and hair strands of the child, parents and her siblings were sent for chemical analysis. The results again proved that arsenic exposure in child, which reported significant levels of arsenic in her samples. Further, genetic studies were also performed to rule out genetic causes of a liver disease. And yes, it was finally confirmed the high level of arsenic in the Ayurvedic medicines was the reason for her liver disease. We did our best to make them understand how Ayurveda nearly killed their daughter. By resorting to unproven, adulterated and crude Ayurvedic preparations to treat diseases like seizures for which modern science has well laid repertoire of medications to lead a normal life. Also by realizing the fact that the toxic effects of the chronic arsenic exposure which is going to linger on her for a lifetime and can even cause cancers, the importance of periodical investigations and follow-up was clearly explained. But to our despire, this has become a mind-numbing incident for those working in the healthcare. It is depressing to note that modern science is now faced with a novel problem that needs our dire attention. During the course of clinical investigations to identify the causes of a disease, we are now in addition forced to inquire on the role of alternative medicines, aka unproven and scientific pseudomedicines that is in fact promoted by the government's squandering public exchequer. It is indeed disheartening that little children like our girl are getting scapegoated in such avoidable events. This study report can be read in full here, the link for which is provided in the description. Please find it. And if you find this information useful, please share to your friends. Thank you.